Greetings from Mars, virtual Mars guy coming to you this time from Gusev Crater, where the Spirit rover landed back in uh, January of 2004. And you can see the lander platform still there over in the distance. So geologists are like planetary historians trying to figure out events that happened in the past, sometimes billions of years ago. And I'm here in Gusev Crater because events that happened about three and a half billion years ago can help us understand what's going on, what's going on with the geology in Jezero Crater, where their Perseverance rover is. So we know that the landscape here was formed by basaltic lava flows billions of years ago. So we can compare the rocks here with what we're seeing in Jezero Crater. This is what lava flows look like after they've been beaten up by rocks from space and eroded by wind and sand over billions of years. They're reduced to rubble. Wind and sand and time help sculpt sharp edges and facets that are known as ventifacts. This is most common on dense, fine-grained rocks. The view from orbit shows the dark streaks left after mini tornadoes called dust devils vacuumed up the reddish dust. The broken up lava flows still show curving edges called lobate margins wherever they encountered higher standing terrain. Now we'll take a quick trip to Jezero Crater, almost half a world away, courtesy of Mars and Google Earth. The patchiness you see is because of the different image data sets available for the global color map. We've seen dust devils in Jezero Crater, but without as much dust, we don't see similar streaks. But there are lobate margins here, which suggests that there also are ancient lava flows. That's what we'll be looking for on the ground. Back in Jezero Crater now, you can see the flat top hills of the delta off in the distance. And then behind those are the mountains, the eroded rim of Jezero Crater. And you can see the tracks around here are much wider and farther apart than with the Spirit rover tracks because Perseverance is a much bigger rover. And the sort of circular patterns that you're seeing those are where the rover has turned. So that's the style of, of turning that these rovers use. It's good for navigation purposes. So this is a place where it could have been underwater when ancient Lake Jezero had filled this crater. So it's reasonable to uh, hypothesize that the rocks around here could also be sediments from the ancient lake. But it's these gray rocks around here, the boulders and cobbles, the gray ones, these are the ones that could be ancient basaltic lava. So we want to take a look in, uh, up closer at these rocks. You can see similar sharp edges and facets like the rocks on the plains of Gusev. They also have a similar smooth, dense texture. So visually, they do look like basaltic lava rocks, but measurements from the other rover instruments are needed to help prove this. There are other gray rocks nearby that look much weirder. A virtual rock hammer helps show that this one is pretty big. They're shot through with holes and don't have facets and sharp edges, but they still could be basaltic lava rocks. The holes might be from gases bubbling out of molten lava, as is common on Earth. There's also bedrock around here. That's rock that's formed in place and hasn't moved. There's nothing like this in Gusev Crater on the plains like what we were looking at before. The rocks around here, they erode differently than the gray ones we were looking at earlier. There's sort of more soft and rounded shapes, and there's even evidence of fluting uh, that forms from sandblasting of soft rocks. But there's no evidence of layering like we see in Gale Crater, where there was also a lake, and that the Curiosity rover is exploring. But these rocks could be volcanic sedimentary rocks from explosive 
volcanic activity, but it can be tricky to figure out. Some of you may have noticed an even weirder rock in this scene. It looks a bit like an overturned bucket with a starfish coming out. But this is a great example of how just the right shape, lighting, and contrast can create illusions. The raw image before it was color calibrated and contrast enhanced helps reveal the details. The rock is not hollow, but it has been sandblasted in a way that scooped out material and left a ridge that casts a shadow, and the starfish arms are just narrower ridges. The action of wind and sand and time can make weird shapes. Finding lava rocks would actually be a really good thing. This mission is designed to return core samples of rocks to Earth in some future mission. Having a sample of basaltic lava in a lab means you could determine the absolute age of when that lava was formed. And that could help us interpret the geologic history of Jezero Crater, including when the delta was formed. And that would tell us something about when the climate of Mars was habitable for life. It's the search for life that's really driving this mission.